Okay, hey guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the Very Really Good Podcast. This is an episode of the podcast that I know. I know the number of it, and it is 173. And I didn't just look it up on YouTube. Um, I because I don't know how to I don't know how to do that. Um, I I am a YouTuber. I am a YouTuber. I do YouTube as my job. I don't know how. I actually don't know how to use the site. Um, I've actually never actually watched videos on there either. So I I know that you can. Like I know that you can watch videos on YouTube. I just don't know how. Um, like I'll type in youtube.com and then like, it'll like the website will pop up and then it'll just be like, there's just so much stuff, you know, like there's all these pictures and words. Um, I thought that when I go to youtube.com, a video would be playing, right? Like a video that, cause that's what it's for, but you're showing me a bunch of pictures and words. What the fuck is this, man? What am I looking at? What is this website for? Okay. What is it? Oh, it's a video. No, it's not. I can't see it. They're all pictures, right? I don't know what the fuck YouTube is. All right. I don't, I don't get it. I'm going to keep uploading videos because that I know how to do that. I know how to do. I know how to upload videos. I wish I could watch them. I wish I, I sometimes I'll be, I'm like, you know, I'll be like, I'll be watching Netflix or something. Um, but even then I don't understand Netflix cause it's like, they only have like the, the short, <laughs> they only have the short versions of movies at play. Uh, like they, it's sort of like a, it's like a, it's like a preview of the movie that would, that makes you want to watch the whole thing, but I can't figure out how to watch the whole thing. I don't get it. And I want to watch things, you know, I have this desire to watch and consume content. I just don't know how to do it. Right. But anyways, happy new year. Happy new year, guys. Happy new year. It is 2022. Uh, hope you guys had a safe and fun new year. Um, you know, I had fun. I uh, drank a little bit, you know, watched the ball drop. Really dropped the ball on that one. New York, Times Square. Uh, Times Square really dropped the ball on that one. You really dropped the ball on New Year's, huh? Um, but yeah, it was fun. Um, I didn't really make a new year's resolution. I don't really have, I haven't made one in a while. I have, I, cause I just don't think I can stick to, to something like if I, maybe if it was something realistic, like don't shit your pants. Like, I think that I could do that. Cause I haven't done that in like a decade. Uh, it's probably like five. Yeah. I think it was probably like five years ago. It was the last time I did that, but you know, um, but you guys, that's none of your business, but (laughs) it is now. Um, but you know, I feel like if the resolution was like, watch less TV or something, it'd be like, I like, am I sure I could do that? But like, I, would I even know Then I actively have to be like, I want to watch TV. And then it'd be like, Oh no, my new year's resolution thing. Right. So I don't, I, or maybe, I don't know, dude, I just suck at bettering myself. I'm not good at making myself a better person, you know? But I mean, New Year's resolutions, they don't have to be good, right? Right? Like, what is that? What does it mean? New Year's res- Meaning of New Year's resolution. A promise that you make to yourself to start doing something good Oh, or stop doing something bad on the first day of the year. Okay. Well, let's let's go to the Merriam-Webster. Okay, okay, Merriam-Webster, the Merriam-Webster's dictionary, which is for the most part, you know, a reputable source for meanings of things. Definition of New Year's resolution: a promise to do something differently in the new year. So I could like I could be like I want to I want to fucking key more cars dude i want to i want to fucking pop more tires you know i want to do 2022 is the year of the curtis curtis connor ding dong ditch movement okay join in this year i want to do more ding dong ditches than anybody else i want to go i want to go up to people's house and ring their doorbell 
And it's going to be the ring. I'm only going to do ring doorbell too. So they see my face. And you know I'm coming. Okay? I'm going to ring the fucking doorbell. All the ring the ring doorbells. I'm going to go, hey. And then I'm going to run away. I'm going to, I'm going to ring the doorbell. And I'm going to run away. And you, and, and you know it's me. But I'm going to run away really slow. Like, like in slow, like I'm moving in slow motion. So like I'm barely at the end of the driveway by the time they open the door and they go, Hey, and then I, and then I'm, I'm like running away, right? I'm, I'm running away. I'm running away. Right. And then I, and they go, Hey, and I go, happy new year. <laughs> and, then, and then I keep running away slowly. Um, yeah, that that's 2022, man. I'm going to ding-dong ditch 2,022 houses. 2,022 houses. How many is that a day? Quick math on the pod. 2022 divided by 365. Uh, that's like five, five and a half houses a day. So I do like around like six, you know. That's easy. And I just do the same six houses every day. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, New Year was fun, man. Uh, we finally got snow up here in Toronto. It's finally starting to look like winter time because global warming was uh was saying was 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 saying hello. Uh, you know, it was pretty warm outside. It was like not snowing at all. Like Christmas Day was like just like rainy, which is weird. Um, Christmas was directed by Sam Rainey. It was kind of crazy. Um. But yeah, it's snowing up here, man. It's starting to look like Christmas in January, which is good. Um, But cases are going up again. Cases are going up. Okay. Cases are going up. And Ontario just went into like another like semi lockdown, which is really cool. Um. So, like, schools are closed. They're doing, like, remote learning now, I guess, for the next, like, three or four weeks. Um, you know, they reduce, like, they stopped, they banned, like, indoor dining, so we can't go to restaurants anymore. Um, you know, gatherings are, sh- like, s- recommended to be, like, five people and shit. Like, it's it's just another lockdown, um, which is cool. You know, it's really cool because, you know, me and a lot of most other people did what we're supposed to do, right? We got both shot. We got both doses of vaccine. Um, we wore masks everywhere. We, you know, we we stayed. We kept our distance and stuff. Sure, there were some times where it was like. Maybe we shouldn't have done that, but like, you know what? We're only human. We're doing a lot better than some people were doing. And then and then people just don't get vaccinated and they fucking get COVID and then they get in the hospital and they fuck everything up. Okay? Cause like and dude, it's so f- like it's it dude. I, I it's so tough to like I think it's okay to complain about some things and and to not and not sound like an anti-vaxxer, right? Because it's not what I am. It's not what I am at all. But like, I just don't, I don't think the lockdown is really going to do anything. I Honestly, I don't think so. Like, sure, I get like the restaurant thing will have an impact because that's just not allowed. But like indoor gatherings, going to happen. Like they're, they're going to still happen, especially for the unvaccinated. They don't give a fuck, Right. The people who are vaccinated are the ones that are actually going to follow the rules. And they are the ones that shouldn't give as much of a fuck because they're like, they have protection, right? And dude, fucking Doug Ford, bro. I'm starting to sound like a fucking cons- like Ontario conservative, bro. But like straight up, this Doug Ford guy, the premier of fucking whatever. What is he? What is even this fucking job? Premier of Ontario. He like, he's the one who's like, we are going on a lockdown. Um, He's like, he does this thing. If you're in, if you're from Ontario, you know it. But he like he guilts everyone when he does these fucking like press conferences. He's like, folks, this is not, this is all your fault. Okay, 
Uh, everyone dying from COVID, your fault, okay? And, like, the whole thing, they're like, guys, you have to get out there. You got to... You have to get out there and get, and get your booster shot. You know, you got to be protected and safe. And it's like, I, 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 want, I want one. I would love one. And they're like, go book it. Go get it. And then I go. I go, okay. That's what, that's what you guys are telling me what to do. That's what will keep everyone safe. Great. I'm going to go do that. I go to the fucking government website. No appointments anywhere for boosters in like up until like June. There's none. None. So why be like, okay, guys, the only way we're gonna out of it, we're gonna get out of this is if you get if you go out right now and get your booster shot. Where are they? Let me go get one then, you know? Guys, you got like not enough people are getting their boosters, man. Where where are they? Where, where are they? I love one. I would love one. Dude, I'll even fucking jet I'll fucking poke myself, dude. I don't care. Are they just in a are they all just in a pile that you're hoarding? I would if you're okay, you know that scene in Saw 2? Spoiler alert for Saw 2, but you know that one scene in Saw 2 when there's like that uh that hole in the ground with all like the used needles in it and they had to like jump in and get the antidote or whatever? If that's if that was the way to get the booster, I would do it. I want one. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. I would I would jump into a pile of booster shots. Okay, if for a shot at a booster. Okay, but they're just not. They're not anywhere. So fuck, dude. Fuck Doug for being like, well, guys, will you? This is. This is just this is this could have been avoidable if you all got your booster shots, then we'd be fine. We can't, okay? You expect me to fucking? And they're like, oh, they're doing a, a pop up at um, at like one place for the whole city of Toronto, and it's a strip club. And I know I said strip club in a little derogatory term, you know, not term, but in a in a derogatory fashion, but that's not why I said it. Like strip clubs are fine. If you work at a strip club, if you go to one, that's fine. Fucking, it doesn't matter. But that's the one place we could do it for the entire city of Toronto. <laughs> yeah, man. Go to go to Zanzibar, the place that had a fucking huge COVID outbreak. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Have some. Have some boosters for us, man. Booster? I hardly know her because I don't fucking have one in my arm. Okay? And it sucks at, like, complaining about lockdowns and shit because I feel like an anti-vaxxer. But it's like, I'm not... I'm, I'm a pro... I'm, I'm so... I'm actually on the... If it's a circle, I'm like, I'm so pro-vaccine that it's almost getting to the other side because I'm so angry that I can't get one. You know, because I'm gonna be like, oh, okay, well then I guess, okay, then I guess, fuck it, then I guess, fuck it, I don't need it, right? You know what I mean? I think I'm, j- I don't know, I think I'm just fucking frustrated. I think, <laughs> clearly, I think everybody is. I think we're all very tired of this, especially up in Ontario, where um, you see everybody in America, they could just go get one anywhere, and, and like anywhere, and then uh, Ontario's like, ah, oh, well, we have five for the whole province. Is that okay? Can we make five boosters work for all the millions of people here? I think we could stretch those out to like six or seven people, right? Fucking hell, mate. So, I don't, honestly, dude, if you see me at anti-vax protests, just know that I'm there. F- <laughs> I'm kidding. I've never fucking go to that. But, you know, what? it's frustrating, bro. I just want a booster, man. Even a booster seat, you know? Just so I could be a little taller than people when I sit down. That's fine, too. That'll protect me from COVID, right? Because I'm a little higher, right? COVID is... Everyone's breathing out COVID through their mouth. If I'm, abo- if I'm like a couple feet above people, I probably won't get it. Because it's just going to... The COVID is going to go into my chest or my neck. You know what I mean? Uh, tall people actually can't get COVID. Uh, I'm only, the only tall, the only way tall people can get COVID is from other tall people. 
Like, I think anyone over 6'5", if they got COVID, you know they got it from another fucking 6'4 and up person, you know? And this is medically backed by fucking tall doctors anonymous. I don't know why they're anonymous. <laughs> well, I, I I don't I don't want anyone to know that I'm a tall doctor. It's embarrassing enough. Um <laughs> I mean everyone knows that I'm a doctor, but nobody knows that I'm tall. Okay? This is a secret. It's a secret that I'm keeping. Oh, what a bit. Dirty bit. You know that Black Eyed Peas song? Oh, oh, I want you so bad as my only wish. Oh, 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 oh. You know that uh, Black Eyed Peas song? <laughs> this is the worst podcast in the world. Oh, yeah. Um, Okay, we should get into some silly stuff because we've been talking about some really serious things so far. So let's talk about this. Uh, this fucking picture. Hold on, I have it on my phone. I gotta, I gotta, uh, I gotta, I gotta bring it up on here. So there's this convention that a lot of people have been tagging me in. A uh, sign for this like convention that's coming up in utah salt lake city salt lake city utah um because it kind of relates to the 22 convention that i made a video about last year i think two years ago it was fucking long time ago but uh so what's going on is alpha con alpha con 2022 uh be great or be nothing, it says. February 18th to 19th, Grand America Hotel, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, purchase your ticket below. And they got, and we got the fucking fellas. We got the boys that, that are going to be speaking at the AlphaCon 2022. We got Jimmy Rex, <laughs> the scariest dinosaur known to man. Oh no, it's the Jimmy Rex. It's the fucking Jimmy Rex. He's going to he's going to fucking he's going to sell pyramid schemes to us about how to dodge the asteroid that's going to fucking kill us. Uh we got Ian Went. Wend? Ian Went. Ian Went? Is that how you say it? Went. Ian went to AlphaCon to do a speech. E okay. Ian W E N D T went if you change the t to a y his name is ian wendy so that's pretty fun and then we got keaton hoskins we got bradley (laughs) dude dude his name is bradley what the okay his first name is brad his last name is lee l-e-a bradley that's just a name that's like my first name was kerr my last name was tiss Nice to meet you, I'm Curtis. And they're like, nice to meet you, Curtis. I'm like, hey, hold on. Use my first name. That's Curtis was my father. <laughs> Say, use my first name. They're like, what are you talking about? What? Curtis is your first name. I said, no, it's not, bitch. It's Kerr. All right. <laughs> uh, then we got Keith Yaki, which is what I do after I drink too much. Uh, we got... This guy's name is The Bull? The Bull. Okay. And then Jason Harward. <laughs> and then Tim Ballard and Aaron Wagner and Nick Santanastaso. Uh, dude. So when I first saw this, I was like, oh, they must be like, you know, teaching hate people how to be like, Alpha males, like how to, um, you know, how to sp- like speak to women and shit, like all the typical alpha male stuff, right? But it's not quite that. It's not as bad as people are saying online. 
Let's watch the trailer. Okay. Hey. Yeah. 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 Hey. 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 Gotta motivate. Gotta elevate. Gonna salivate at all these men. Look at these men. Look at their beards. And their shirts. Oh my god, I'm gonna cream. Wow. Give me a ticket. Hey. Give me a ticket, huh? Uh, yeah. So that's cool. AlphaCon 2022. Uh... First annual business conference, okay? That makes it seem like it's the first business conference, like, ever. But I know it's, like, their first one, but it seems like there are people to be like, yo, no one's ever done this before. (laughs) No one's ever done, like, a conference where, like, you learn about stuff from guys. (laughs) Uh, Taking your business to the next level. Get ready to hear from successful entrepreneurs and discover new ways to transform your business in 2022. Interact and learn how to take your business to the next level. Okay. Uh, we got the featured speakers. All right, and then we're going to get to the pricing of this shit, this alpha convention. And I don't know how they, I don't know how they uh, come to these prices. Like, I don't know how they decide on these. Um, okay, it says buy your tickets early for a huge discount we will only hold this offer for a limited time act now and it gives you a, a like a 15 minute uh countdown uh but i was at this uh site about three hours ago when i was planning this podcast out and it also it gave me a 15 minute countdown so i don't i don't know uh, i think they're lying but um come get real tactical strategies to scale your business attend as an executive member or sign up as a vip guest to get exclusive access to the greatest entrepreneurs and influential minds in the country don't miss out on this life-changing opportunity okay so (laughs) you got the virtual one which retail is i like i don't that's just a price they just put retail price is a thousand dollars but today you can get it for 500 it's actually not a thousand dollars because we just made it up, but that's retail. Okay, so five hundred dollars to see it to to a virtual one, and then five hundred dollars to just go to it in Utah. You get executive seating selection, two day pass, alpha merch package, and then the VIP one. You get VIP seating, a two day event access, private dinner with speakers, private training. And Q&A with speakers, VIP alpha merch package. Holy shit. The private dinner is, sounds like way too intimate. Like these are business coaches, right? You're not trying to fuck them. <laughs> private uh, candlelit dinner with the hottest speaker, with the speaker of your choice. If you're selected, you might have a chance to throw it back for one of these alphas. Wine and dine, these business execs. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a uh, husband comes home and is like, all right, honey, I'm home. And then uh, his wife is like, oh, my God, how, how is the how is AlphaCon? Did you scale your scale your business? Did you learn any uh, any tips or anything? And he's like, oh, yeah, I got some tips. <laughs> Yeah, honey, I did get some tips. I received some tips. I, I I guess you could say that. And she's like, why he's putting so much emphasis on the tips thing? And he's like, I fucked the guy. Fucked the guy, honey. I fucked the bull. Okay. Uh, he took, hey, man. And she's like, what are you talking? You cheated on me? And he's like, listen, okay, it was a private dinner with the speakers. What did, I had to make a good impression. <laughs> I had to make a good impression on him. Had to be an alpha, okay? And that's the most alpha thing you can do, is fuck a dude. You know? Just so you can, like, absorb the man's power. You know? It's like that guy from Heroes. What was his name? Fucking Skyler or something? He would like go or he would run around and like steal people's powers by like cutting their brains open. It's like that, but you know, just filling up a guy. 
Uh, but yeah, that's super. I want. I really want to get the fucking virtual pass. Should I get one? That'd be a good. Let me know if you'd watch that video. But don't tell them I'm gonna do it. Okay. What if I did? If I bought the virtual pass for five hundred dollars, and I was like, and dude, the title, I attended an alpha convention, bro. That sounds like a fucking smash hit. That sounds like a hit of a video, bro. Okay, I think I'll do it. Well, I'll leave a comment if you want to see that. But but also, I went to what the website was before the AlphaCon. Get rid of this fucking backslash stuff. And look what we got. Every entrepreneur has a website like this. It is the most bare bones shit ever. They use the same font. And they got the same shit. They say, they say the same shit. They preach the same stuff every, like every single guy. It's so weird. How to avoid the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make when funding a business. And bullshit. These things pop up every five seconds saying like who bought it, who joined. That's fucking cap, sir. It's cap. All right. That's market cap for my fucking stock market bros. I bet your host, Jeremiah, the bull Evans. <laughs> Over $500,000 in business credit. What does that mean? Business credit? Is it like how much, how much his rent limit is on his card? I don't know what that means. Over 20 million in sales. One CCX click funnels. Yeah, it means nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing to me. But dude, I wanted to show you a video because I so I went to the bull. He has a YouTube page, of course. So we're going <laughs> to, I want to watch this video with y'all. Three ways to build confidence. So this guy is like a fucking crazy successful entrepreneur. A uh, thousand subscribers. And hey man, I don't want to be, I don't want to be that guy, right? But if like, if measuring success, if entrepreneurial success is by YouTube subs, I fuck, I got this guy beat, bro. I got this guy beat. Even on my shorts channel, I got this guy beat. I'm a better entrepreneur. Okay, you should be listening to me. Fuck this bull guy. This bull this is bullshit. Yeah, this is bullshit. Okay, let's watch it. In order to establish confidence, you have to manifest it. You have to speak it into existence. <laughs> Come on, bro. You actually think it. And if you look at the science behind the spoken word, there's power in it. Okay, your- bro. Honestly, dude, I it's so funny to think that like entrepreneurs are the type of people to like talk shit about. Like they have no like what I'm saying like they are like the these type of entrepreneur bros are like the male equivalent of like, like crystal girls, right? Like Chris, crystal mommies, right? Who are like, you just have to like fucking manifest that you're going to have money. And then tomorrow you're going to get a check for like 30K. And you're like, no, I won't. Hey, no, I won't. Right. You just have to like, believe it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the same shit. They're like, you just have to like believe. You just gotta fucking believe in yourself, bro. You just fucking say that you're gonna have money, and then you'll have a business and a Lambo behind you. Words when you actually can speak it. Here are the top three ways you can start gaining confidence right now. Let's go. Number one is establish your non-negotiables. What does that mean? I know he's going to tell us, but what the fuck does that mean? Oh, and one comment from Green String. <laughs> Dude, nice. We got one comment from fucking Green String. From G String themselves. Slap the old love by the bull. What confidence really means to confide in or to believe in, mm-hmm. the only way you can actually believe in something, let alone believe in yourself, is if it is consistent is if it consistently returns based on what you ask it to do. Meaning, does- What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Does it have integrity? Do you have integrity? No. Confidence stems from integrity and self-confidence, believing in yourself, stems from keeping promises to yourself. And that can start with one simple thing. 
All you have to do is establish your non-negotiable. <laughs> okay. It can be as simple as every single day I will check my bank account. That is actually one of my non-negotiables that I do every single day. I... Uh, I don't, I, I don't, uh, so num, okay, <laughs> the num, the number one way to build confidence is, uh, check your bank account every day, fuck, I mean, like, for some people, maybe that would work. But like, I feel like for a lot of people that like when dude, I if I was in like me in like college, and I was and if I were to like check my bank account, that would take away all my confidence, right? It would take away all of it. I'd be like, oh, I can't, I can't do anything for like a week. Fuck, I feel like shit. I'm embarrassed. Right? I'm embarrassed, right? Also, dude, like, what's up with entrepreneur? Like. They, this is the shitty part about entrepreneurs. Like, if you do business, like, if you're a business guy, if you're a sales guy, fine, right? But, like, just do that, right? They try to be, like, these weird, like, celebs, YouTuber things. Like, it's so strange to be like, I'm going to get the best fucking gear. I'm going to get two cameras for this shit. Three cameras. He's got, oh, this shot right here. A close up and the fucking Yeah, he's got three cameras, bro, for one video. And then a Lambo in the back and some fucking old muscle car in the back too, like and his huge fucking logo. Like this is the shit like if you're trying to It's hard to be like relatable and likable when you got like imagine I did all my videos like this. That'd be insane. I can't afford a fucking Lamborghini or that car probably or that huge. I probably can't do any of that. It's not feasible, but imagine. I don't know. I'm not a fucking entrepreneur, bro, so I don't know what they, these guys even look for in content. I guess someone would watch this and be like, oh, 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 I'm going to blast. They're just fucking bonered the whole time. They got a rock hard wiener this whole time. What if number three is like three ways to build confidence is to come to the fucking alpha con and come to dinner with me. All right. Wine and dine me, bro. And make out with me. All right. Alpha con. Alpha con the first date. Okay. I will. <laughs> alpha con the first date. <laughs> Boom. That's like the best drug I've ever made in my life, bro. Uh, but yeah, man, entrepreneurs are weird. It's not new. I just thought it's funny to have a fucking... It's just funny to have like a thing that you're stoked on. You're like, this is going to be fucking sick. It's going to be life changing. It's at a hotel in Utah. <laughs> you know, dude, this is going to change your life. It's going to fucking, this is insider shit. All right. As soon as you go, you're going to have your life changed. This is top of the line. Just cream of the crop stuff. It's in Salt Lake City, Utah. Hey man, peace and love. But like nothing ever life changing in a good way. <laughs> out of utah uh i love utah though i'm just fucking around um i got good friends in salt lake city okay it's a good place it's fun but man relax a little bit the bull uh you know i wanted to uh i wanted to i saw spider i i'm changing the subject now uh um I saw Spider-Man no, no Way Home, um, and I was going to do a, I'm not going to, but I originally planned, I'll wait, maybe, I don't know. I was originally going to do a review of it, I talk about it for a bit, um, and, like with spoilers, but I'm not going to, okay, I'm not going to spoil it, um, because, uh, you know, first off, for a few reasons, number one, uh, Jenna hasn't seen it yet, and I don't want her to overhear me talking about it and spoil it for her. Uh, and two, 
Uh, if someone's like listening to this podcast, they walk away for a bit, they didn't hear this part, and they come back and they just hear me talking like, yeah, so fucking Oc- Dr. Octavius whips his fucking cock out. Um, you know, it'd be pretty, uh, it'd be pretty shocking. Um, so I'm not going to do a spoiler review. I will do one without a sp- spoiler. Um, it's probably the best Spider-Man movie uh, ever made. And that's crazy because I grew up, um, Sp- the first Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire came out when I was eight and it came out on May 4th. It came out on my birthday. Um, and I saw it on my birthday cause I was in love. I've been in love with Spider-Man. It's my favorite superhero since I was like fucking five or six. So, you know, growing up watching the Tobey Maguire movies and you know, I think I was like, was I like 16 or something or 18 when the Amazing Spider-Man movies came out? And now being in like my mid to late 20s, you know, in my 20s I've been watching the Tom Holland movies and they've been incredible. So watching No Way Home, uh, you know, with all the old villains and stuff, it was like, I don't know. It was just so cool to see. It was such a great like celebration of the character of Spider-Man. Um, and it was just so cool. It was like, it, it was like, it's whatever, it was everything I wanted and more from a Spider-Man movie. That's all I will say. It's very good. Um, and oh, bro, I didn't want to talk about this, but I watched this fucking, I do this thing, you know, once I watch a movie that I like, I'll go to YouTube and I'll watch like a fucking millions of videos about the thing I just watched to be like, did I miss anything? What does that mean? Did I miss something cool? Now that I can watch those videos, I love it. Um, but dude, I watched this review of Spider-Man No Way Home. I'm not going to say the name of the YouTuber, but I have never wanted to like shove someone so bad, like through the screen. Cause like, dude, I, I've said this before. Like I talk shit on movies on my channel all the time, but it's like, I still have fun watching those movies. I still like enjoy them right like even when a movie is maybe like i will say maybe like when i first started doing movie reviews i sort of lean into this like this is bad but like man a movie's a movie and i'll say that I'll, i've said that so many times on the podcast i like pretty much if you you sit me down and put a movie on in front of me i'll like it all right i'm easy to please man but people who like take movie reviewing like so serious ah they bug me bro and this in and this this fucking YouTuber that I watched, so pretentious, so pret like dude, he would like sh- I kind of want to watch it. Actually, fuck it, dude. I'll put this guy on blast. I fucking hated this video. Oh wait, no, it'll give spoilers. Okay, never mind. Uh, dude, he did this thing where he was like <sighs> giving his fucking review. He didn't like the movie that much, um, which is like fuck fuck off, right? Sure, I'm like sure you're have, you're allowed to have your opinions, but like you're just saying that to be contrarian, a hundred percent. Everyone liked it, okay. You just want to be like you want to be the guy to be like. Actually, it uh, could have been. Uh, I didn't like it. What? It's a okay. I, it's it's frustrating, man. But he would do this thing in the video. I'm getting so heated again. But he do this thing in the video where he's talking. And, like, between shots of the movie and, like, he's voiceovering the whole thing. Between shots of the movie, there's just shots of him, like, looking at the camera, like, smoldering and, like, trying to look hot. Dude, what are you doing? What am I watching? What is this? And it was the whole thing. It was another thing. It was, like, the entrepreneur of fucking movie reviewers. Because it's, like, just review a movie. Okay? Just review. You don't have to be a fucking celeb while you do it. You don't have to try to look hot. What is this? It's a it's a fucking cool movie, man. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That should piss me off. But go see the movie, man. It's really this is hey, this is the only re- review you need to see. If you're on the fence about watching it, here this is my review. It's really good. Go see it. There you go. And dude, I critique shit all the time, but I do it to try just to make people laugh, right? Don't I? I've high. I don't think anybody watches my videos to be like, oh. 
Yeah, you had a good point, right? That's not what I'm. It's not what I'm about. I think it's pretty apparent. Fuck, man. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to think of what we do next to talk about. I got some TikToks. We haven't done a shitty TikTok in a little bit. I'm trying to think of what one we could do. I got two that we could do. They all kind of have to. Okay, we'll do. They kind of have to do the same thing, but we'll watch this one. This one comes from Fatty Fenderlof. 5.0. Please, I don't think you understand how little validation men get. Like, women will get compliments just for being a woman. You'll get validation for being a certain gender. That's an amazing thing. That's that's a crazy thing. Like, men will get hated on just for being men. Understand that men will get their first flowers typically at their funeral. <laughs> they get very few compliments over the course of the year. Genuine compliments. And... <laughs> They get almost no validation in their relationships. It's usually about their women, their female. <laughs> women are flooded with attention, compliments, positivity, you know, from a young age. And that's an amazing, beautiful thing. But you guys got to understand, like, men don't really get that. And that's why when you compliment a guy, it lights him up. Men really, like, go through a lot of stuff. Men are expected to provide support, take care of themselves hey. with no reassurance <laughs> from the world whatsoever. It's very difficult sometimes for men. Please, I don't think you understand. Okay. Um, that, that's a lot. There's a lot to process there. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out where to start. Let's play it one more time so I can we'll go bit by bit, I guess. Please, I don't think you understand how little validation men get. Like, Okay. First off, I feel like they, they do. I, I think we do a lot, actually. Yeah. I don't know what that point, what he's trying to say. Like there are, like people praise men all the time for the same, like if a, like, I just saw a thing, yes, like some article yesterday about, little look at me, citing an article without remembering where I was from. But, um, you know, in workplaces when, like, a guy is like, you know, you know, I want this done now. It's going to be good. I want on my desk by two. You're being, like, assertive, being, like, a good leader. But, like, if a girl does that, if a woman does that in the workplace, it's like, oh, she's being a crazy bitch. You know what I mean? So, like, it's, it's not like we... Dudes get praised all the fucking there's Elon Musk fucking fans out there like he saved the world, right? Women will get compliments just for being a woman. You also like not not really that true. I feel like women have it pretty tough, you know, just <laughs> like beauty standards and whatnot. I'm not saying like, dude, this is the thing when like whenever I like say in videos and I like try to like be like, look. You know, I'm trying to, like, speak up on, like, you know, women's issues and stuff and just try to be, like, a person who can talk about it. People are always like, oh, is he saying guys don't have problems? I'm not fucking saying I never said that. Oh, wow, you fucking white knight, bro. You fucking, anytime it's a guy, Kurt's silent. It's, like, not really. I'm not saying guys don't go through shit. Of course they do. But the whole thing, okay, I'll get to it. You'll get validation for being a certain gender that's an amazing thing that's that's a crazy thing like men will get hated on just for being men understand that <laughs> men will get their first flowers typically at their funeral they get very few compliments over the course of the year genuine compliments and they get almost no validation in their relationships it's usually about their women their female okay before that their women point the thing about flowers and compliments who's whose fault is that Right? Whose fault is that? That's, you're not, this is, this whole video is just a thing about, it's, 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 again, it's like me with being so pro-vax that I'm on the other side of it now. <laughs> not actually, fucking kidding, but there's, he's so like anti-woman in this video that it's like pro, you know, like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like he's, this video is like a uh, a critique on toxic masculinity, right? But he doesn't know that. It's like no one these no one's giving guys compliments and it fucks us up and like we never show each other that we're, you know, that we're good and we never rise lift each other up. It's like, yeah, who's fu it's your fault. To you and your friends do do that then. Right? Do you want flowers? Sure. Go get your buddy some flowers, man. You could be the guy to do that, right? I mean, if 
Dean or Jacob gave me flowers, I'd be like, why? Thank you, but why? I don't I don't know what I, you know, it'd be nice though. You know, it'd be really nice. But like, are you not complimenting your friends? Are you not complimenting your your guy friends? That's fucked up. You're a bad friend. Me and me and me and the homies fucking compliment each other all the time. They get almost no validation in their relationships. It's usually about their women, their female. Okay. They're yeah. <laughs> That's fucked up too. You got bad friends, bro. It's like I never get any validation from my friends. It's only about my my female, which is a crazy thing to say, but it's only they only they never say anything good about me. They just keep saying how hot my girlfriend is. It's kind of fucked up, actually. <laughs> so yeah, buddy, you got to get new friends. <laughs> Women are flooded with attention, compliments, positivity, you know, from a young age. And that's an amazing, beautiful thing. But you guys got to understand, like, men don't really get... enough. They're, they're like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like growing up as a boy is like so... <laughs> It's so much easier for and like a bit like comparatively, obviously it's like everyone has had different childhoods and whatnot, but like base, like just regular household, right? If they're both middle class, like same upbringing, everything it, like fucking it's easier to be a guy. It is right. Cause boys, what you got? Like you, you got your balls that drop or something. You start, Making semen. Girls have fucking periods every month. Well, I mean, there's like boys who got periods too, but you know what I'm trying to say, right? I'm talking very fucking basic shit, but um, I don't know, man. I, it's so tough because like you can't be like, once you say that, like, guys have it easier, then everyone's like, oh, you're saying guys' issues don't exist? You're saying, like, oh, the, the male uh, suicide rate uh, isn't higher uh, than female suicide? I'm not, like, it is, right? Because it fucking, because of guys. Because we're fucking ruining it for everybody else, right? Yeah, it's fucking frustrating, man. Because it's like, just, t- you could just, f- if, if you're having these problems and they're just fucking bottled up, dude, and you're just going to fucking freak out and make a weird audio like this when you compliment a guy it lights him up i like the soap though i will say that i like the soap in this video it's very cute if you're just listening to the audio you have no idea why would there be soap but he's washing his car while uh, this voiceover happens um, men really like go through a lot of stuff <laughs> imagine he's saying this, this this isn't a voiceover he's saying this while he's washing his car and he's playing a piano with the other hand that you can't see he's playing the piano in the background People walking by like, damn, he's fucking talented, bro. He's washing his car, playing the piano, and being misogynistic at the same time. Damn. Uh, men are expected to provide support, take care of themselves with no reassurance from the world whatsoever. It's very difficult sometimes for men. These, I don't think you want... Yeah. And that has almost 2 million likes, which is crazy. But yeah, it's just so funny to be like, dude, it's hard for men out here, dude. And it's like, it's all... And it's only girls get the, the praise. And it's like, what... Maybe if you went to AlphaCon, surround yourself with some other boys, you know, see what happens. You know what I mean? Oh, man, what a weird tick. TikTok's so fucking weird, bro. A video of a car wash. <laughs> While talking about that shit. Um, we got like 10. Uh, what are we at? Like 50 something, bro? Let's wrap it up. I'm sorry. Uh, let's wrap it up. I'll do it. The, I'll get to those questions next week. Um, but if you want to send some questions for advice, very, really good at gmail.com. Um, also, check out the Patreon. I'm about to do a, bon- a bonus episode right now. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for chilling. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Very, really good. Episode 173. This was fun. I had a good time talk, uh, ch- chatting with y'all. New year. Feeling good. It's going to be great. Big things coming for the pod this year. Like, fucking soon. So, uh, stay tuned, man. Uh, very excited. So, Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And I will see you next week or see you on Patreon. Up to you. All right. Peace out.